The finance bill 2024, I'm sure unless you're living under some rock, you must have heard that in Kenya there is a problem. There's something called the very punitive uh, taxes which are being laid upon Kenyans in uh, something called the finance bill 2024. And uh, for all Christians and all believers and everybody on the country, uh, I think it is important because uh, it affects all our lives. And uh, the most funniest or the most weirdest part of it all is that the president of Kenya, he is said to be a Christian. And uh, if he's a Christian, I must, I, I must tell you, I'm sure probably might have heard of a king in the Bible who tried to pull such kind of a stand. And uh, what happened to him? <laughs> and uh, you see, when um, you're dealing with the public, you have to be very careful. You have to be very keen, especially if you're a leader. Otherwise, people are going to revolt against you. So there's this one king who tried to do the same, and people revolted, and they kicked, them, <laughs> kicked him out. And uh, I would just want to tell you about this so that maybe you can hear what happened to this king. And just know that uh, this life, nothing is new under the sun. So there was this king in the book of uh, First Kings chapter 12. I want you to hear what happened to him and how people revolted. The Bible says, And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it. For he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. All right? That they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, So this king, Rehoboam, his father Solomon had just died. So he was taking over, and the people were trying to uh, lay down their... Uh, their issues and saying, please, just uh, don't do like your father did. We have been troubled enough by taxes, punitive issues. You know, Solomon was really rich and most of his riches came from the people's being highly taxed. So now the people are coming to Rehoboam and telling him, please, dude, just be cool to us. Don't be like your father. Listen to verse 4. They are saying, the people now, huh? thy father made our yoke grievous now therefore make you the grievous service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put upon us lighter and we will serve you and he said unto them depart yet for three days then come again unto me and the people departed okay he wants to think or maybe he wants to ask some people what he's going to do um and the king rehoboam consulted with the old man that stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived and said, How do you advise that I may answer these people? And they spake unto him, saying, If you will be a servant unto these people this day, and you will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, they will be your servants forever. You see, the old men have told him, All you need to do is listen to these people, speak good words to them, do them good, and you will rule them. But then, did he listen to this old man? What did he do? But he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and which stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel will you give me that we may answer these people who have spoken unto me? saying, Make the yoke which your father did put upon us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, That shall you speak unto these people that spake unto you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you eat lighter unto us. That shall you say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. And now whereas my father did laid you with heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke, and my father has chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Hmm. You see now, he has gone to his boys, the guys that they have some booze together and grew up together, and uh, he has asked advice from these guys. 
and they have told him, <laughs> don't even care about them. Tell them that now you're going to use whips and scorpions to whip these people. You're going to use even more punitive taxes upon these people and don't even give them a chance to speak over anything because you're the king. Now, listen, he went back to the people. So verse 12 says, So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him and spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from the Lord, that he might perform his saying, which the Lord spake by Ahijah the Shilonite, unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion do we have in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. You see, people got angry and they asked, do we have anything that we are sharing in this house of Jesse? What, what is our connection between us and you? You're the king. Lead your family. Lead yourself. We are tired of this. We are going our way. And that is the moment that the kingdom of Israel was divided into two. And uh, there was the beginning of the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And that was the end of it. My friends, people departed and they, they went their way. And the kingdom of Judah was only left. <laughs> the kingdom of Judah was only left one tribe. Only one tribe. And the all other Israel went their way. You see, when you become a punitive king, then people are going to stay away from you. They are going to demonstrate. They are going to revolt against you. And uh, what is happening in the country right now is something similar. I think the president of Kenya should just be checking on the Bible often to read some of the examples because the Bible is always clear in everything. And it says that there is nothing new under the, under the sun. And if you don't see what happened to Israel, and I believe that the wife uh, of the president also is a pastor, and the other fellas who are in the cabinet, most of them, they are believers. I'm sure they should be seeing these examples and they know when people say enough is enough, it may be very punitive to them. They may not only find themselves leading their own family. So this is just something I thought, let me just share out because we're in that time that everybody has to wake up to this truth to be able to understand. And unless you know this truth, my friends, you'll never be set free. Open up your eyes.